Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Christensen. Welcome to Horror 101 with Dr. AC, and this is Scarathon 2023, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. We are just over the halfway point of October, which means there's still time to donate. The link to the, uh, the fundraiser is below in the description for this video. And tonight we will be talking about 2022's Skinamarink. Uh, directed by Kyle Edward Ball. And here to chat with me about Skin and Marink uh, is my awesome panel. <laughs> Let's we'll see how y'all feel once we're done with our discussion. Uh, <laughs> let's go all around the corner here. We got Adam Witt, Dominic Conti, Hello. Jess Ader, Anna Mariah, and Josh Zagorin. And again, we are chatting about Skin and Marink from 2022. Uh, Dominic, I'm going to actually throw the ball to you first because you reached out to me earlier this year. It was, I want to say like, you know, spring and like, yeah. have you seen it? Have you talked about it? Can we talk about it? And that's immediately how I felt finishing watching this is going, okay, this is a movie I absolutely need to talk to somebody about. Uh, and I didn't want, it's one of those things where I'm really glad I watched it alone because I think you kind of do need to take in the full experience. Uh, I don't think it would have been the same had I had somebody there, because I would have probably been turning to them a lot and going, so, uh, but uh, I wanted to hear, because you saw this in the theater. Yeah. I was as high as I've ever been in my life to watch this film. <laughs> and I don't know if that was good, bad, or indifferent, but I was really super duper high, and I felt it enhanced it. Um, yeah. but then I did watch it. Uh, I rewatched it in, in absolutely sober and I still liked it. So I uh -huh. think that's something for the, the work. Uh, it, the, the, the feeling of, of being stuck in that theater. Uh, and you know, I, I didn't speak to my, uh, my friend, uh, who I was sitting with, but just the feeling of just that movie rolling over you, getting this, you're getting this slow motion ass kicking by this movie and you can't stop it. And I thought that was just perfect way to experience it, uh, to, to experience it in a theater. And it, the, being high was important and relevant and germane to me at the time. But really more important than that, I really liked the fact that I couldn't stop this beast. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when, when I rewatched it, of course, I, I, could, I, I also could have stopped it because I, I was watching it on video, but I didn't. You know, and that's when I took notes. And so I let that thing roll along. But it was, of course, it was, it was a different experience. But uh, it was really a fantastic way to to meet this film. Quick uh, raising of hands. How many people had seen this movie before I sent out the list for the Scarathon? Okay, so Anna and Adam, this was kind of like you came into it to, for the for the October challenge, right? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, I want to talk really quick to Jess and Josh. Since you were you you like wanted to talk about this movie, are you pro or con or just kind of fascinated? Josh, go ahead and kick us off. Can you be either with this movie? I feel like I know so people much who that, are. Uh, yeah, well, you go on the internet, of course. Like I think that the the this like you said, uh, Dominic is a beast, and I never really thought of it that way. It feels like for experts only. This kind of movie where you're like, listen. This isn't just like pop this on on a Saturday. This is like connect with this movie. I I recommend it. I, it's one of those things with horror movies where you're like, I liked it, but can you say you liked it? Because it was so disturbing and pulled all the juice out of your body by the end of it where you're like, I don't know if I liked it, but it was good. Mm, yeah. um, I'm pro this movie, uh, but I do want to talk about it. Yeah, for sure. And Jess, I mean, you as a, a creator, like you create a lot of like really abstract experimental wor video work. So I'm guessing this is kind of like right down your alley. But what was your experience to it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm i jealous that I, that Dominic had seen it in the theater. I do wish that I had seen it in that setting. But I found it interesting. Uh, it kind of got my college juices going like that aspect of my brain I'm like it's really awesome that someone saw this through because it's clearly just shot by shot experimentation um is it perfect no but i'm glad that i saw it alone i did something i haven't done in a long time i turned off all the lights i just like knew from seeing the teaser that it was that kind of movie and it sort of made me feel like i was like 16 to 18 years old again 
because uh, around that time I was finding a lot of news. I know I had mentioned on another podcast I was watching all of the like David Lynch shorts uh, that were just like the grandmother and the alphabet that it were very similar territory. Uh, anyhow, I thought it was a worthy endeavor and it stood out kind of like the interstitial stuff in the movie VHS, the first one. Mm. I found some of that to be the most interesting where they weren't trying to do a narrative loosely, but it was just them kind of walking around in a house, which I always like that conceptually, but I, uh, I rather enjoyed it. Uh, I do think it could have been slightly shorter, <laughs> possibly. But then again, I don't know. I don't know if it needs to be critiqued in that way because it's it's pretty clear what it is, and uh, it 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 set out to do what it wanted. I think I think that yes, it is defiantly anti-film. It is uh, defiantly anti-convention, and it, it again it knows what it's doing. And uh, it has the courage of its convictions. And kind of to your, your comment, Josh, I don't know that it's trying to entertain so much as it is to kind of create yeah. a, different, a different, uh, different language of film. Like it, it's, it's so much about playing with form and what our expectations are about what cinema is. I'm curious, okay, so Anna and uh, Adam, what were your feelings before I before I weigh in? I have to agree with everything that's been said so far. I hadn't seen it before. I watched it just last night. And in kind of a similar setting, I turned out as many of the lights as I could. I waited until um, actually right about this time and um, put on headphones and watched it on my laptop, which I think outside of a theater experience that's probably the best way to watch this film is it's just you and you're as kind of enclosed as possible um, to really get the full experience and to also hear as much of it as as you can because there are some parts where there's sound but it's sort of indistinct um, unless you've got you know some some pretty decent headphones on um, and you pick up a whole lot more, um, but also just the kind of like droning stuff in the background too, that really like having that wrapped around your head is just really like adds to the whole experience. I do agree that maybe it could have been trimmed. I would have loved <laughs> like if it had hit like the 90 minute sweet spot, that would have been maybe a little bit better just because I'm sitting on a floor, right? Cross-legged, like, you know, my ass is killing me after a while. But, um, I mean, even then, I don't think I can really complain about that because clearly it's um, an hour and 40 minutes for a reason. Yeah. Um, and it is hard to critique or criticize a film that's clearly so deeply personal too um as much as as ball you know made this and distributed it it's clearly his film i mean it was shot in his childhood home it's almost like i don't want to say it's untouchable but kind of in that regard it's it's a little bit like well i mean this is his yeah baby so to speak yeah. and adam <laughs> Um, <laughs> because I was absolutely thinking of you as I finished watching this. I'm like, huh, I wonder what happens. Like I mean, like, look, like I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum. Like I am not qualified as a movie critic. I am. I just like, I like scary movies. I like spooky films ever since I was a kid, all for different reasons. Um, this one, I just, I don't know. It's it, not for me is the word. I felt like it would be like taking like a quarter tab of acid in purgatory is like what this movie would be. Like you were supposed to put on like snowboarding glasses in pitch black, have headphones, and then just kind of become mesmerized. I never quite got sucked in, um, which I think is a big part of it. I, I liked a couple of things. I really liked the sound design. Um, I liked the crackling of the film. I really liked, or like, you know, like the old school, like film that was, I forget, don't know what it's called, but um. I really liked uh, how the kids would whisper every now and again, and you know they were tough to hear, and they did put subtitles to like make sure that you got what they were saying. I thought that was eerie and cool. This movie's one hundred and ninety percent energy, zero everything else. 
Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. like, I just like, you know, like it's, I don't know, you know, like I would have to like, I would have to like seriously be on like a, like a, I don't know, like an eighth of mushrooms <laughs> to like really understand this like or something. I like I, Everyone's talking about doing drugs and watching this movie. I'm like, <laughs> no, don't. It, that is what doing drugs is like. It's just staring at a thing for three hours going, what am I doing here? Also, the worst thing, the worst idea ever to take any sort of drugs and watch this movie, by the way. Don't do that. Except for like maybe like, you know, get high or something in the theater. Oh, yeah. But like, you know, <laughs> anyways, sorry, I digress. Um, It was um, it was interesting. And in, in since everybody's kind of brought some last point, since everybody's kind of brought something up about this, uh. 20 minutes short would that have killed the guy i don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> like, for, this to, for this to be a 20 minute short yeah 20 minutes short like a fun like you know creepy pasta vibe like yeah 20 minute or it would have been very strong i think um yeah. I, it was just it was tough for me you know like to like sit back and just kind of like really try to like stay in this in this zone when i wasn't kind of like caught to begin with and and I that that's a beautiful transition because that was my experience Sim, similar to others. I I I did the whole thing because I knew this was one I wanted to really try to give it its best shot. I just watched the Outwaters uh, the week before, and uh, Scott and I had the conversation about that, and he said it's it's similar in that regard in that not a lot happens and it's kind of anti-film. And I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to put on my headset, I'm going to turn on all the lights, I'm going to give myself. to this screen. And I was playing the game of not checking to see how much time had passed. (laughs) And I made it about 30 minutes in. Yeah. And I was like, I'm like, Oh my God, how much longer is this movie? (laughs) And uh, what I, what I found fascinating is that for me, it's such an intellectual exercise. Like this is clearly we're shooting angles that are not dynamic. They're not interesting. Uh, there's there's kind of reveling in the mundane, and there's the action versus the inaction. In that we see the cartoons, and it's like every time the cartoons come up, it's like, oh, thank God, something is actually happening in a way that I can recognize. I'm familiar with this. This is a language I speak. But everything else is so uh, so contrary to what we've come to expect from a movie. And this is uh, this is one where I go, this is such an experimental film. And what happened was it was submitted to festivals and some festival programmer went, okay, this is very different. I think our audiences would appreciate this. And yet... Within that, because I think it, it, it has to be more than an intellectual exercise for people to really embrace a film. You can't just go, oh, wow, that's that's really different. It has to be something where people genuinely have some kind of emotional response to it. And what I find my emotional response is the fact that somebody has an emotional response to this. <laughs> like, that's what I find fascinating is that there are people out there who right now are this movie terrifies them or, or that they are like going, Oh man, it was so creepy just being there and feeling trapped. And I'm like, that is not my experience at all, but I absolutely have to recognize that that's your experience. And that's kind of what I find fascinating about this film is the fact that other people like it in the same way that I'm fascinated by people who like reality TV or, you know, like hardcore grind, you know, Norwegian death metal. I'm like, "Ah, that can't do that. But there are really avid fans of it. So uh, Dominic, I want to kind of bounce back down to you. Um, There's something that I, we see a lot of like close-ups of children's objects. And one of those things I noticed that we see a lot of is like the Legos and things like that. And that kind of cued me to the idea of, this is a puzzle. This is something to assemble, you know, for yourself. And I'm kind of like, yes, because Legos don't look like le- they don't look like anything really. But when you put enough of them together, they create the vague shape of something that we can go, oh, that is a whatever. For sure. Uh, I think yeah, there was that. That's very on purpose to bring bring images of uh, Legos, things that like can be constructed 
as well and then there was a big uh there's a big house imagery in there and the idea of like a, ch a, a childish phone you know a child's phone but then it being used for another purpose and what i got out of that was this demon can construct things and that's part of like that's the microcosmic understanding of what this demon can do to these kids uh and to the whole situation and to time and reality itself is to construct anew what it wants it takes some time for it to do so but it does that yeah. and then that's part of like what you you know when you watch it and then when it had that one little chiron 572 days the demon has basically fucked with time to the point where like now those kids live in that world with the demon which is exactly what i think it wanted anna i'm curious did you when you were listening to it were you watching it with subtitles uh captioning or was it just the subtitles that uh ball is providing just as is okay. so i didn't have any additional closed captioning on or anything like that it was just straight um but to kind of like jump off of what Dominic was just saying, as much as this demon can construct things, it can it can take away yeah. as much. I mean, it's like disappearing doors, yeah. faces, entire people. Um, and I mean, even, you know, just parts of 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 people like, you know, like just a head or yeah. whatever. And then the rest of the body. So um, it, it's kind of an interesting mirror there, too. But it's interesting that he chooses to subtitle some things, chooses not to subtitle other things, that we hear half of the 911 call, but we don't hear all. Like, like it switches halfway through. It's like I'm hearing both sides of it, and then suddenly I'm only hearing the 911 operator. And, you know, again, that's the thing where it's it's so clearly experimental. And and just kind of, you know, like when you were watching like the David Lynch stuff, that does generate a sense of unease. There's still um, themes there, too. Uh, right. How old is this director? <laughs> he's young. He's, he's uh, pretty young. Because that's like, kind of what I was saying. It made me think of those years of my life or even like early Lynch projects where in some ways it's like, let's not try to pretend like we understand the entire structure of like a three act structure. And it's, I mean, it's like bands first albums too. There's some grit to it because in some ways you could try to overly like, I'm going to try to be Christopher Nolan and explain every little detail. And then it would be just psycho babble and it, totally annoying in a different way but i do agree i mean it i had i saw it months ago uh just because i had saw a thing pop up on i think instagram obviously they i think that was right when they were hyping it when they were releasing it and so for this podcast i was like gonna watch it again but my honest thought was like i don't i don't think i could do it again <laughs> that soon i could eventually i would recommend it to specific friends for sure but uh there are definitely moments i still found it worth it at the time i'm trying to recall um there was a bedroom scene and that i thought was the most impactful and there was something with a knife and eyes yes yeah. and those two moments of the film made it still worth it, but I was hoping for more of that because that happened like midway through. Yeah. And I do think that would be my critique is there wasn't anything to build upon after that, it just sort of went back into the like plateau. And those moments were really powerfully like agitating uh, and, and actually made me uncomfortable a little bit uh, in the way that I was hoping that this film would be, but uh, it never quite, met what my expectations were but again it's a very difficult thing to uh I mean, to oh go ahead no 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 finish, finish your finish your thought. uh you know i don't know what i was just gonna say there i got lost <laughs> in i got lost in a skin and rink of my thought <laughs> <laughs> because here's the thing like i know kyle edward ball has seen movies before yeah. like he, he knows what a movie looks like and he's deciding that this is going to be a movie that is not like that movie. And, and that immediately for me puts it in the realm of art. It's like, if you wrap a string around a, a tin can, you throw it in the trash, 
it's trash. If you wrap around a string around a tin can and you put it on an easel and you put it in an art museum, it's art. And I feel like that's what happens is when it gets put in front of an audience as a legitimate movie in a festival setting or on Shutter, we are forced to deal with it as a movie. And that's where I go. That's what's that's what's interesting to me is like the fact that we're asked to watch a movie that is not like movies. It's not like what a movie, what we come to expect a movie to be. I think that analogy is really is really apt for this movie because I think it comes down to intention. If you throw mm -hmm. a tin can away, you're getting rid of it. It's trash. But if you choose that specific tin can, wrap that specific string around it a specific way with intention, then it's yep. art. Yep. And I feel like with Skinamarink, there's so much that could be easily brushed aside as like, well, this is some weird stuff. I don't know where it was going, but I had a good time. And I feel like this movie had intention. And it would, yes. every now and then something would happen. I'd be like, oh, there's there's a story here. You could get to it a little quicker. But yeah, <laughs> okay. And then it had me. Um, because I, I, I really like that that concept, Jess, that, it, that it's agitating. And I was like, yeah, that's what this movie is. It made me super anxious. Though. It was achieving the goal of the of the horror movie experience my throat was tight i felt thirsty i was nervous and i it was just like a slow like well yeah like what david lynch does that slow like i'm gonna put you in a mood but i you know like a good ending so personally i thought this maybe could have had some fireworks so that would have been nicer i well, feel like there was a movie that could be made around this movie and that oh, yeah. these are the moments of horror. This and would be the great thing in this TV screen in the film that they yeah. keep cutting to. I think there could have been like a higher concept to it for sure. Right. Like if, if but this I, is if this is the nightmare you keep going back to that you're afraid you're going to go back to, but there is a linear journey that you're on with a, with someone to ground you. Yeah. I mean, the, everything they were doing was extremely effective. Well, I, I think what you just said, Josh, like the idea of the intention, like there's no way anything in this movie happened by accident. Right. There are so many deliberate choices on camera all the way through. And so it's not just somebody who doesn't know how to make a movie. It's somebody who's choosing to make a movie different than what we've come to expect a movie to be. Yeah, it's got that uh, Commedia dell'arte, that, that neo Commedia feeling where it's like, no, you're you're supposed to be like, what what time is it? Yeah. How long, right. much longer is this? You know. Actually, there was one mistake in the movie. What's that, Adam? I look. I, I don't know. I like saw it in like an article when I was like when I was reading about Skin Rink, and it was like in the Lego scenes. There's this one piece that like holds like structures together, and it kind of looks like an X. And that Lego piece specifically wasn't uh, designed until <laughs> 2008. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the movie it takes place in 97, right? Is it? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, hilarious. I was like, that's yeah, funny. whoever yeah. sniped that. Yeah. That's a, that's a deep dive. I appreciate <laughs> that. That's deeper than I was ever prepared to go. <laughs> about, about I didn't Lego. notice it. I read. I, I read it. Plenty of time you're staring at it that eventually. <laughs> yeah, going to yeah well, literally. Hang on. There's, I wonder what that costs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, you're. I mean, Adam's a professional chef, and I, I again, I was thinking about you because, you know, the idea of. You know, like when you you choose to make a dish your way, like there you we learn how to make make food by emulating other recipes, but then you go, okay, what can I do that would be different, but still convey what my intention for the dish is? And I think that was what I was like going, huh? I wonder, you know, like that's what this filmmaker is doing. Mm -hmm. Is he's going, okay, I I I know what a movie looks like. I know what a three act structure looks like. What would it be like if I didn't show, you know, if I just showed feet or if I just show the tops of door jams, right. what would that elicit? And, 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 and we, as we all know, like when we're in the kitchen, like sometimes stuff just does not go the way we planned. We're kind of like, I'm not going to put that in front of anybody, but for this director, he's like, no, I'm going to put this in front of people and I want to see what they make of it. Because I think, you know, the kind of to extend the, the can analogy, if I put that can with the string around it on the stool, you are forced to think about it. You're going, what is that? And it's so easy to dismiss it and be like, Jesus Christ, it's just a can with string on stool. But it's like, or you can be like, what is that artist trying to tell me? 
And yeah. it's what we choose to how whether we choose to engage with it or not. I think that like like to go back to your like dish analogy, like riffing, you get better at it with experience and repetitions, and you kind of know what to add, what to take away with experience. I don't know like how many other like films this guy's taken. You also got to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? So like you just got to start doing stuff, seeing if it works, right? And mess up more times than not. But like I don't know, like how many it was was this this guy's first movie? He's well, done a bunch of short films. Short and he films. Has a, and he has a YouTube channel. He understands, he understands what he's what he's doing then. So this he, is did a, a, he did a proof of concept uh, short film for this as well. It doesn't look, to, to me, it doesn't really look that close to this. But I mean, he, right. he definitely shot something to see mm -hmm. what he needed to see about, you know, then making the film, you know, the full length out of that. Got it. And he was going with, like, he, he runs a YouTube channel. He, like, does, like, people's oh, nightmares and tries to kind of, like, create uh you know short films around their night oh, that's not bad right like it's like yeah, having a fever dream. like that's what a night terror feels like yeah. you know that movie i i kept thinking too how this could have been released in another time or maybe the future of film could be i'm not saying i want this but it could be <laughs> like a series of tiktok videos or whatever uh, i know some people use youtube in that respect but um i I guess one other thought I had was, uh, have you ever seen Tangerine or the yeah. Florida Project? Yeah. So, yeah. so oh, like yeah, Tangerine yeah. was, I, I was trying to think of something recent that was a new thing and Tangerine was all shot on an iPhone and it did feel, it, it's still a narrative, but it was still pretty loose. And then to see where that went into Florida Projects, which was like one of the most unnerving like theatrical experiences I've ever had. But at the end, when it all came together, I was like, wow, that was really beautiful. Agreed. Someone walked out during it. Uh, I had some rough moments where I'm like, I don't even know if I, I feel like icky, but I think that's the point. Imagine if you were actually a person living in these types of areas. So it's taking you into that a little bit. Sure. Uh, and so I guess my point is I'm wondering what this person's next film will be. And hopefully it isn't just a one-off thing or do they just go back to YouTube? But that was my ultimate thought in the end was I hope that uh, they keep exploring this. And also I think of like Harmony Korine where I'm like, oh, I really don't like listening to this guy in interviews but i enjoy moments of his film but it seems like this is more of a humble person and maybe not as artsy in the sense of uh, annoying brat uh but i i like it was exciting in the respect that it's a young person doing something different and uh i think there are some happy accidents in it at, at times this had the vibe of i am the thing that lives in the house you ever saw that movie anthony perkins son Augie, Augie perkins, i am the pretty right? thing that lives in the house I am the yeah. pretty thing that lives in the house that's what it's yeah. called this had that's that vibe uh, but that one had a deeper narrative or a more not deeper but like a more concrete narrative that yeah more follow. linear that we could yeah. it, it more accessible for sure it definitely it, it indulged in like that long anticipation game yeah where I just said, where you're like, oh, you think something's coming, but nothing's coming. But I'm going to make you think <laughs> something's coming, but nothing's coming. Yeah. Dominic? Like, I had a, a, a strong feeling watching it the two times I watched it that we're getting the fractured perception of children. Yes. Going through trauma, a legitimate trauma that's realistic enough on its own. But and and I think uh, there's a, there's a, there's theories about the film that that kind of lead to like it's it's their perception of things and it's their their parents are splitting up. There's some abuse on that level, and I don't necessarily deny that. But I never I never thought for a second that there wasn't also a de demon working machina machinations on this family, and particularly in order to get those kids. And so I felt like the point of view a lot of times could be from the children's point of view or the children's understanding, which is strange and, and, and off-putting and off, or even from the demon's point of view, who isn't going to have any sort of uh, understanding that we can, that we can necessarily recognize. So if, if something's off or, you know, off kilter, that could be the way that that demon perceives things. And we have to try and understand from there. And we never will. Uh, I'm curious uh, because when we were talking about the outwaters earlier, um, the the fact that it's a hundred minutes 
I mean, we all agree that that's a deliberate choice, you know, like it could have been shorter. I'm sure many people at some point said, Hey, you could cut like, you know, 20 <laughs> minutes out of this Definitely. And, and it would, it would be better for me. You, at could, least. Yeah, you could cut five to 10 minutes of that thing. I'm, I'm a big fan, but you could cut six, yeah. Just seven minutes and not lose any story. But I think, I think here's the thing. I think like the 20 minutes is what that is about. The, the, the taking that longer than necessary journey that it is, it is about forcing the audience to sit longer than they're comfortable with. Yeah. It's, it's forcing them to engage with this after they, you know, after, after they started thinking about other things and then they wander back to the movie again. That was one thing I absolutely, I was like, I'm not thinking about this movie. I'm thinking about other things that relate to this movie. Like who, who is this movie for? Um, you know, who, what was that festival person thinking when they were like, Hey, I wonder if we could program this for, our, you know, like, so my brain is going all sorts of places. And I guess that's what I mean. Like I'm looking forward to watching it again at some point because it was such an intellectual exercise for me. I couldn't really get on this movie's wavelength and I'm kind of envious of people who were, you know, who were actually like going, Oh man, this like reminded me of being alone at home and you know, like that, that weird nightmare of your parents are gone. And, and I was like, yeah, I, I, I can get that intellectually, but I wasn't feeling that. And I was kind of bummed out that I, I wasn't able to get there. I, I, it hit me just a little bit like that because okay. it was about the time I would have been that age, I think perhaps. I don't remember what year did it say it took place? 97. 97. All right. So no, but anyway, the, uh, go back, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> but like the, uh, the, uh, the laying on the floor, the carpet, the walls were very, cause I grew up in the eighties, like right in that sweet spot when everything was kind of like tan and Brown and they had fake like wood paneling and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, this feels very reminiscent to me of being a toddler on the floor playing with toys and watching random stuff on TV that I would just watch on repeats. So there was, that was definitely baked in. And, and I forgot really about the on. year, the year aspect. And I, I don't know that it needed it because like to what you're saying, one can conjure up the, because to me, it was like, those are more eighties. Uh, it felt seventies to I me or seventies. Yeah. Other than yeah. maybe some of the walls looked like modern apartments. So I thought it was kind of a, unnecessary element of the yeah movie. and isn't that interesting that it brought up the 70s for you and the 80s yeah. for me and it was like, <laughs> well yeah, exactly i mean you're, it's going to be when you were a kid when you were that kid that's yeah. what the floor looked like and that's what you would do and those to to well those like toys that. yeah still are sold today because yeah. of the nostalgia of probably the grandparents sure. right. now or that phone, whoever that phone, they just, i was like i don't remember if i actually had that phone but i know that phone i wanted it, it. it popped up yeah. i was like and who doesn't love stepping on Legos? I mean, come on. It, that is just a timeless tradition. Classic. There it is. Uh, <laughs> this is Home Alone 5. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is very much a, 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 uh, an, ex an ex exercise in also kind of like getting up and close with objects. We relate more to the objects than we do to the people. Mm -hmm. um, and there, uh, I think you were talking about, Anna, the idea of things disappearing, like, Things are con constantly going away and going away and going away. And, you know, I think that does speak to a sense of loss. Like uh, there is some kind of trauma about loss and that is happening. You know, that's an undercurrent that seems to be just riding throughout. It's like, you know, like you keep losing things. I can't remember how I, I wanted to go back and I will at some point to be like, how many times does he say dad? How many times do we hear that kid calling out for his dad? And the dad, I think, responds once, maybe. And there's that early conversation on the phone where he's like, yeah, he fell and hit his head, but everything's going to be fine. Yeah, it totally speaks to that nightmare quality, though. Like, how many times have you had a nightmare about, like, not being able to locate something and then just going down an endless hallway, you know, and it just keeps doing that, whatever that, like, Hitchcock camera move is or the zoom yeah. and pullback you know and it's like but there is that palpable sense of loss because clearly something is happening with with the parents they're they're losing the mom's more or less out of the picture i mean she's in she shows up in the bedroom but is right. that actually the mom i mean yeah. 
it seems like not there's that going on and then like physical things just disappearing it's it speaks to some kind of like primal fears and there's that shot of the cartoon where the rabbit is consistently making himself disappear the presto changeo cartoon yeah it just keeps looping over and over again to the point where i mean when i was watching it i was like this is gonna drive me nuts <laughs> like just hearing that loop over and over again like i'm slowly going insane right now yeah. um which worked on me i think that was the point you know and it, it totally worked on me it's like oh. when someone asks you what's the earliest you remember and then you try to actually physically think about yeah what's my earliest memory it <laughs> looks like that it's fuzzy it's got a weird angle but there's parts of it that you're like oh i know where that is and, and i know what that thing is it's, but it's chopped it's chopped, chopped up it doesn't right. proceed you know in any linear fashion it, it's not it doesn't progress correctly were any of you latchkey kids like left home uh, by yourself a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what this made me think of. Yeah. Well, I guess the dog noise actually is good because it's <laughs> okay. it's an experiment. It fits right in, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there are no so, rules. <laughs> <laughs> because there is something to being left alone that many hours in a home that seems... Because really how big can this home be? And yet the film makes it seem like sort of like a seventies or eighties mansion movie. Even those, yeah. as I get older, I'm like, even a mansion's not that big, but it's right. enough for an hour and a half horror film where it seems like there's just 300 corridors. Uh, but that element of it makes it, uh, I guess somewhat tied into that feeling. Uh, but yeah, just like maybe just a few less chords. <laughs> but I did like towards the end. I do remember there was like a flipped upside down hallway. Yes. And yeah. so again, it, there were like these parts where I'm like, oh, it's drawing me in again. And then, which is just like a dream, right? You know, like you have those moments where you almost have you, know, you absolutely remember this moment, and then there was some kind of something that got me over here. I don't know how that happened, but suddenly I'm at school and now I'm out in the woods. And, you know, it's like, we just, there, there isn't any connective tissue. So we do kind of like loop through it. I, I don't know. I think again, it's, it's one of those, I would love to have not had to think so much about it. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm glad I had it stuck in front of me. So mm -hmm. thanks Fantasia. Thanks shutter. I was just bummed that like, nothing really fleshed itself out. Like, you know, like maybe a movie might end abruptly and you're like, oh, what happened? Did he or she do this, do that? Did this happen? Nothing was explained in this movie. It right. it, nothing was even like abstractly explained in this movie. Like I'm a sucker for learning about, like for even there being like one short mentioning of like the demon's name or like a place where he or she came from. And then like going like after the movie, like thinking about it, being like, oh, like what, what, who is this person? Like what religion is it? Like what, you know, like what are their like family tree? Like I love like, and then I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking this up on my phone. Like, is it bad? Like, am I going to get possessed? I love like looking up more information about like things and aspects from the movie. And this was just like, so I don't know, like kind of amorphous beyond amorphous. Yeah. Like not even one pixel, just like <laughs> sort of. That actually would have been a good use. They could just put clues throughout that actually mean nothing, but make you like, well, it's sort of like the early um, Blair Witch. Uh, yeah, Blair Witch, uh, yeah. when they were just like giving out little clues on the internet over time to where it made it seem like it was more important than it was. And uh, I mean, it's an important film. I don't mean that, but I just mean <laughs> the lead up to it. Uh, similarly, uh, I did think of that. I really, I appreciate everyone's point of view who like people who are a little less enthused by it or particularly like uh, Adam just mentioned, like uh, wasn't wild about or wasn't, or people who weren't moved by the ending. I guess I'm really on the, uh, uh, the complete other side of that because I felt like I saw the progression because once we got to the end and the demon got pretty much what it wanted and yeah, uh, even the little kid and, and was able to be in such a power that the little kid could finish with asking what the thing's name was, then dealing with, with the life that she was then going to live, which is with this horrible thing in this new universe. And the thing denies her that answer. But I wonder, and I don't know if I'm the only person who thinks this or if I'm, there's millions of others, but if the thing's name isn't Skinnamarink, 
I think that's mm-hmm. uh, I assumed that's what it was. Yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, I wondered, like, you know, like that's an old tiny song, but this is yeah. like this demon could have been around since the 14th century. We don't really we know when that song was recorded. I guess I looked that up and I think it was 1910, but I mean, we don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like what sounds like it could be one of those old timey children slash. Oh, yeah, books. I'm sure it existed right? long before yeah. before it was actually recorded. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of the nature of this creature who found finally its way, like, you know, to to get hold of something. And maybe it's, its entryway is this house and this family. I hate to wrap this up, but uh, I, I am, I'm, I'm really, I was happy to know that I was going to have. Uh, a good group of folks to sit down with and and have my encounter group experience with because because I knew this was a, a heady a heady bunch of folks that would be able to to throw the ball around. Well, thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah. Yay! Thanks for having us. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have uh, again. This is Scarathon 2023, and we are benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. Uh, the link to donate is below in the description. Please make a contribution. This is a cause that's very important to myself and my guests. And until next time, keep searching, keep exploring, and keep sharing the scare.